Um, good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on this uh, virtual panel discussion entitled The Power of Heritage and Culture. My name is Anna Frangovska. I'm a senior curator at the National Gallery of Macedonia and as well an art historian, and I will moderate today's panel session. First, I will uh, give a short introduction to the webinar and the project to which it is related. Uh, then I will invite our panelists to present their approach to the topic. And finally, we will rise the discussion and uh, ask the audience to approach with questions and remarks. For doing so, please pose the questions in the category questions and answers or chat on the Zoom platform. I will, uh, at the very beginning, ask all the panelists who have right to, to talk in the same time as me to put their microphones on mute so that uh, we don't have any mixture of sounds and uh, voices. So uh, when uh, you want to say something, just raise a hand and I will give you the floor. The webinar, The Power of Heritage and Culture, is uh, organized as a final logical outcome of the project shared and contested heritage. The project was implemented in 2020 by European Association for Local Democracy and Forum ZFD ALDA and ALDA. <laughs> the goal of the project was to encourage an open dialogue on peaceful and tolerant interpretation of cultural resources among heritage practitioners and cultural workers. It raised and still is raising awareness of the role of contested histories and shared cultural heritage for the EU integration processes among heritage practitioners and cultural workers. The aim of the project was to improve cross-border cooperation between North Macedonia, Greece, and Bulgaria, which on a regular basis is very deep and extensive, especially in the field of cultural heritage, culture in general, and arts. The project activities were to conduct and publish 11 interviews with practitioners in cultural heritage from Greece, Bulgaria, and North Macedonia that are already published and available on ALDA website and on social media. Then uh, three articles, blogs on the topic, uh, topic of contested heritage and shared cultural heritage in EU countries and role in EU as well already published and available on ALDA website. Then to organize this online panel discussion, uh, whose video will be published on YouTube, and finally make a publication containing all the produced outcomes, which will be available online in December this year. Before I present the speakers and invite them to present their approach to the topic of the webinar, I would like to give a short introduction and pose the preliminary questions that we suppose can be answered as an outcome of this webinar. In these strange, strange times when we are struggling with the biggest world enemy in recent times, invisible to the eyes, the pandemic of the COVID virus, we are still facing other demons, such as the position of the power of the politics, the constant question that confirms or challenges, um, or challenges um, today's um, identity or our identity. This adds further burden to our social responsibility as uh, professionals dealing with heritage, uh, as critical masses, as intellectuals, cultural workers, um, uh, historians. This demands of us answers to the questions such as what is the power of cultural heritage? Whether national narratives should be directly related to the ways of presenting and popularizing cultural heritage? How can we contribute towards the resolution of some disputed or dystopian point in the communication of cultural heritage and culture? Whether heritage will lead us to coexistence and humanism or to deepening certain points of divergence, etc. National narratives and history are important in identifying affiliation, but they are also a manipulative tool in the hands of politicians and according to the needs of certain daily political interests, they are changeable and distorted. Politicians manage to indoctrinate the people and influence the nurturing of the apple of discord, discord, but cultural heritage and professionals related to the protection, promotion, presentation, interpretation of that cultural heritage, along with contemporary cultural creators, 
who create excellent examples of cultural heritage for further generations should loudly and decisively influence the daily political backstage games and offer their own mechanisms of coexistence, cooperation, reconciliation, dialogue, and creation of a common future free, free from nationalism, genocides, seizures, and superiorities. Should history be an obstacle to the future of a modern entity or state? Will we allow ourselves to, to stumble upon the challenges we live in now and instead of building a secure and stable good neighborly relationship together with European perspectives for all? Should the EU integration processes be blocked using an ex as an excuse, revisioning of the history and misusing of the objectives of the history as a humanitarian science? Wasn't the, the right of the self-identification the basic human right? Can we confirm the position of respect for cultural values and heritage as universal values of humanity that belong to each individual and component? Now, let me introduce our uh, tonight's speakers or panelists, Ms. Antonella Avalmorbida, Secretary General of ALDA, European Association for Local Democracy. Then Professor Vladimir Martinovsky, PhD, Professor of Comparative Literature at the Faculty of Philosophy, University of San Cyril and Metodio Skopje. Ms. Sofia Grigoriadu, PhD candidate in Social Anthropology, uh, Pantheon University, Athens. Christian Kovacev, historian and guest lecturer holding seminars in anthropology of the Middle Ages, cultural anthropology and the theory of culture at the Southwest University, Miofil Rilski, Blagojevgrad, Bulgaria. Hello, and thanks, thanks for accepting the invitation for being a part of this online discussion entitled The Power of Heritage and Culture. Before I invite Ms. Antonella Valmorbida to um, uh, make uh, her position, to, to make public her position on, on the topic of this um, uh, open discussion, and probably on the um, issue of the shared and uh, contested heritage. I will shortly, shortly read her um, biography. Uh, Antonella Valmorbida is a secretary general of ALDA since 1999, has a senior experience in promoting local democracy, empowerment and participation of civil society and good governance in Europe, in the Balkans, in Eastern Europe and in the Mediterranean area. She is a European senior consultant on local development with a focus on the implementation of participatory processes for urban regeneration. She manages a network of 350 members, mainly composed of local authorities and civil society groups in over 40 countries in Europe and beyond. She is a president of the European Partnership for Democracy and member of the advisory board of Urban Foundation for Sustainable Development in Armenia. She has been chair of the EPAN Working Group of uh, Concord until 2016, chair of the Committee on Democracy and Civil Society of the Conference of the uh, INGO of the Council of Europe from 2008 to 2011, and she was the coordinator of the subgroup on local government and public administration reform of the Civil Society Forum for Eastern Partnership. She has an academic career at the University of Padova, Italy, and published two books on the involvement of citizens at the local level to promote democracy, as well as various articles. So, Ms. Antonella Valmorbida, please um, uh, tell us the position uh, primarily of ALDA, since you are a Secretary General of uh, ALDA, and then we will ask uh, to point out your personal point of view to the topic of tonight's uh, panel discussion. Please, Antonella, take the floor. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to uh, contribute to this very important project and discussion, which is actually fascinating. So um, I've been briefed to uh, contribute on a maybe less uh, academic uh, perspective on the matter, but maybe to give my insight uh, coming from my experience 
uh, and more from the European perspective and how we have a look at, at the situation uh, in the Balkans for the project, but in general for about these topics. So uh, Alda has been working uh, in the Balkans uh, since the end of the conflict. So we have been involved in processes of reconciliation, but also of common living together uh, since that time. Uh, I worked in Croatia uh, from 1996 to the year 2000. Uh, I lived there uh, in the border with, uh, with Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, the Republika Serbska entity. Uh, of course, uh, the Balkans are per se, in general, a big challenge <laughs> to, to all of us. Uh, when it comes to variety of identity and to places, uh, which mean something that we cannot entirely understand uh, the importance about. And I think that um, when we work around the concept of uh, heritage and culture, one of the uh, learning points of my life is that um, it's uh, you know, it's an immaterial wealth uh, which is in the heart and the mind of the people. And there is no uh, per se um, clear understanding and, and why it means a lot. This is all the question of the fields in Kosovo. This is all the questions about other kind of uh, things which seems to be very, uh, uh, you know, trivial for us and, and which means so much for, for them. Um, nevertheless, I think that the struggle uh, around uh, cultural heritage, uh, culture and places and, 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 and traditions which are part of this heritage are actually has been the struggle all over the continent of Europe. So I think that the peace projects and the development projects uh, that has been so far the European Union. And we don't speak enough about what that dimension of the European Union project uh, has been the, uh, the way to overcome the diversities and the, the clash, as, as the projects say, about, over common and disputed cultural heritage. Um, so if uh, the European project that today is very normative, uh, especially for the Balkans in general, going through chapters, going through criteria, more or less clear, going through appro legislative approximation and so on and so forth. I think that one of the message that we could share is that uh, uh, the European project uh, is it's not only uh, uh, you know development of laws it's it's actually how to deal with these uh, crucial elements which are um, cultural heritage uh, and identity um, and it is so complicated that um, indeed uh, one of the key words from which everything started as a peace process is actually the word of reconciliation. So reconciliation has been the word to make you know, the ball rolling. Because I'm not really sure that the ball started rolling with the community for energy and for the treaties dealing with the the, 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 the carbon, I mean, the, the ball started rolling, working and talking around reconciliation. And this, this uh, has been very strong among the two enemies by definitions, which are the French and the German, um, which actually uh, are still working on cultural heritage places. 
So we're still around those two countries that you have hotspots, which are shared places. And one of them, for instance, is the city where Alda is based, which is Strasbourg, which is a particular place. And this is where, for instance, Europe accepted to place most of its uh, Council of Europe office, uh, the European Parliament, because this is a place of the reconciliation. And where this culture is shared and disputed together. So the French speaks German, the German has a French accent, but on the other hand, there is a very strong barrier there. So there is this, this issue. I think that reconciliation, and it, not only among the two groups, but the, don't forget that in some countries in Europe, we had civil wars. And we talked about civil wars in Italy. You know, it was a lost country for several years uh, with families divided with really uh, extremely big divisions. So the, the reconciliation put together, uh, also German and Polish, which definitely, you know, were on the other side of the spectrum. So that word is fundamental for the creation of Europe first. So reconciliation. The second word, which is an immense challenge for Europe, and I'm not really sure we, really perceived together what it means in terms of challenge. It's the slogan of Europe, the European Union itself, which means united in diversity. So this is the slogan. This is our cultural slogan. So we are saying that yes, we recognize diversity, but still we are together. So this is through this slogan that we are trying to overcome the uh, identity which is divided but united. So this is a constant struggle that, for instance, today is also very much uh, at stake in the sense that, in any case, this, con this long division uh, among citizens which are not able to meet will leave a trace. And I am, uh, you know, cautious that, and I know, that after this pandemic, we will, we will have to go back a little bit to the initial boxes to make people meet again, because we are never, you know, safe from that perspective. The more the people are, you know, not mixing, literally, the more there are dangers that the barriers can restart. So, you know, we, we have this common language, which is the English that we are just talking today, which is some, another, you know, sort of language, not, not really sure this is a proper English, but nevertheless. So I think that uh, united in diversity is the slogan of Europe. It's a big challenge that we try to overcome uh, uh, every day. And this is, those are the values of Europe. Reconciliation and not forgiveness and not to, 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 forgi not to forget. Forgiveness yet, but not to forget. Things have been there, but we have to go through for the sake of our communities. So we, we are, uh, you know, uh, uh, basing, basing our Europe on that. So the role of reconciliation, the way it has been going through has been, you know, driving the European Union process. I think that uh, there have been a lot of efforts also from communities and from government and from various communities, uh, levels of communities to push for this aspect of reconciliations and to, to keep memories, to keep uh, 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 events and places which are able to care about that so that we are not forgetting um, the, this moment. Another very important element about reconciliation is what we call cross-border cooperation. So while we, and this is where we have a lot of those places where our, you know, diversity meets and where our cultural uh, elements meet. And sometimes they are hybrid, sometimes they are sharper. But one of the uh, success of the European Union perspective has been the constant wish to erase the borders, you know, to keep down the wall and erase the borders. And this is the common market, 
those are, for instance, the decisions, for instance, that the cohesion policy in Europe are not planned country by country. They are planned region by region, and in some cases, regions which are over the borders. So you have uh, some critical borders like between Germany and Poland, they are united together by a common policy so that they are, you know, uh, structurally together. This cross-border cooperation helps, you know, to reconcile and to erase the big, the big uh, walls. The concept of a good neighboring relations is also very important. And this is why also there are policies oriented to create this uh, uh, neighboring uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, the word comes in French, uh, uh, you know, to make sure that we have the same language and we are talking about approximation. So we are talking and dealing with the same issues. Back to the identity, how much do we share the same identity? How much do we have uh, really at the European level, the idea that we are sharing the same destiny and the same identity where our diversity can finally get together? Uh, I think that there is still a long way to go and I'm not really sure that we are going to build the European, uh, the almost uh, European, like, you know, uh, the Soviet Union wanted to create the almost Sovieticus. Eh? I'm not really sure that the project in Europe is to have the almost Europeus per se. I think that we are very strongly connected to this idea of united in diversity and to push too much in the direction of flattering everything will be negative. So I think that the valorization of ident local identities should be dealt uh, in a cautious way, but not erased in order not to create a reaction, which sometimes, you know, could be possible. So I think that, of course, the question of identity, but you know that more than I do, it's a multi-level process. You have several identities linked to the place, linked to your profession, linked to your status. You know, even, even being a mother in a, is an, a different identity, you know, than not being one. So I think that from that perspective, our challenge is to accept this multi-level identity. But once again, I think that uh, one of the key uh, aspects of the success of the EU so far has definitely been those keywords, accepting the diversities and not trying to transform them into something else and working on reconciliation through the, 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 the care of some you know, cultural elements and heritage. So I wanted to bring my experience in this. I know the Balkans very well uh, for having you know, lived there and uh, having gone here and there for 20 years. I think this is a big challenge. My feeling is that the Balkans area is generally like a big heart. Sometimes it expands, sometimes it shrinks. You know, it keeps pulsing, you know, it's, it's uh, it keeps pulsing and shrinking and, and breathing out and shrinking and breathing out. So there is constantly this idea that I, I cannot live with you, but I cannot live without you. So it keeps, it keeps going this way. I think we have a lot to learn together and to go through this exercise. So that's my personal opinion and coming a little bit also from my experience. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, your approach, Ms. Antonella. Uh, thank you for showing us uh, the European perspective towards this um, topic, uh, giving us some uh, particular examples uh, from your personal experience working with ALDA and all of the other organizations in the uh, different EU countries. So uh, let's now move on the next panelist and approach the um, uh, Macedonian, let's say, point of view. Now I will invite um, uh, the, my dear friend and uh, professor, 
um, Martinovsky, Vladimir Martinovsky. And uh, before I give him the word, let me just um, uh, read uh, his short biography, Born in Skopje, 1974. He is a poet, storyteller, essayist, literature critic, translator, and musician. He works as a full professor at the Department of General and Comparative Literature at Blaze Konovsky Faculty of Philosophy in Skopje. He is author of um, several uh, books of poetry, like uh, Sea Moon, Hidden Poems, um, Before and After the Dance, uh, Dream and Awake Poems, Dam Spiro Spero. He has published three collections of uh, haikus, uh, An Echo of Waves, Cat in the Mist, uh, Sky Without Stars. He's also the author of a number of literary theory works, um, he is a winner of uh, several literary awards and uh, his poetry has been translated and published in 20 different languages, as well he is a vice president of the Macedonian um, Pen Association. So, uh, Vladimir, uh, will you tell us your uh, position and um, approach to this uh, topic, to the topic of this panel discussion? And as well, you might uh, as well tell us some of the points uh, from the interviews because you were one of the um, uh, one of the interviewed um, speakers or professionals that were a part of the project of. Alda and Zevde about the shared and contested heritage. So please, Vladimir, take the floor. Thank you, Anna. First of all, um, allow me to express my gratitude for being a uh, participant uh, and panelist uh, on this uh, lovely and very inspiring uh, uh, panel, and also uh, uh, one of the interviews uh, in the framework of the, of the project. Uh, I, I, as, as you can maybe um, imagine, I, uh, my, my perspective uh, uh, to this uh, very interesting issue, the power of culture and the power of heritage, uh, is from the viewpoint of uh, literature, especially contemporary, uh, 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 the, the comparative literature, as a discipline which is uh, uh, cosmopolitan. The cosmopolitic because it's a general and and uh, uh, comparative literature, but it's also from my personal uh, experience as a as a writer. So uh, when we when we talk about the power of heritage and culture, uh, first we must have in mind that the cultural heritage is something uh, important that uh, we have inherited from uh, previous generations. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, as well, we have borrowed it from the future ones, on behalf of whom we uh, we have the obligation and uh, responsibility to protect it. Uh, yet, cultural heritage is something uh, we should earn. Uh, uh, let us enter into living uh, communication uh, and save it from oblivion. Cultural heritage uh, should uh, enrich our lives, and it does in our everyday life uh, to help us better understand the people uh, of the past and better understand each other also. Uh, cultural heritage can also help us uh, to better understand human cr creativity, uh, to help us understand that the great achievements of art and culture belong to all man mankind. Um, and. Um, uh, I will I will give you the example of the of the uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, works of ancient literature, the Metamorphosis of Ovid, uh, where the poet points out that he he has created a monument that will last much longer than he in the final verses uh, of his work. Uh, he says that the better part of his being will be preserved thanks to his poetic work. In this context, uh, André Malraux uh, said that art is one of the few things that humanity can be proud, proud of. Uh, uh, in, in this complex and ongoing uh, process of thinking, rethinking, and 
uh, preservation of both the tangible and intangible cultural heritage, the language, uh, from my viewpoint, has a primordial uh, value. We, we just, we just um, uh, um, uh, as, as the novelist uh, Michael Michel Boutor uh, said, that all mute artifacts um, are interpreted uh, with the help of a verbal discourse, which surrounds them, uh, starting from the titles of the works. In, in, other, in, in other words, uh, material, but also immaterial, uh, tangible, intangible uh, cultural, cultural heritage um, requires to be interpreted, to be explained through the experience of language. The attitude towards cultural he heritage could certainly be uh, compared uh, uh, with the uh, storytelling, uh, also uh, with the, the, the process of reading and interpreting stories. Uh, as we all know, some of, of, some of the stories uh, go on for millennia, but uh, unfortunately, some are forgotten. That's the case also with the, with the, with the cultural uh, heritage. Uh, that's why I think that the, the major uh, threats for the uh, cultural heritage uh, are uh, ignorance, um, also uh, stereotypes, nationalism, um, intolerance and war. Uh, in, in, in that context, I would, uh, I would point out that the art education and the education in the field of cultural history are also extremely important when we talk about the role of cultural heritage. If the present or future generations are not uh, shown the value, the meaning, uh, the uniqueness of an object of, or, or one artifact, uh, for example, uh, from the past, uh, they could neglect uh, it completely, leaving it to uh, uh, oblivion. That's why I think that the cultural heritage requires uh, constant care. Uh, the language uh, is also a cultural heritage, as we all know, one of the most uh, valuable. We talk about, uh, actually, uh, today during this panel about, uh, and we exchange ideas thanks to the language as well. Uh, it is uh, through, lang uh, through language that we realize the cult that cultural heritage is something alive in which each of us uh, participates. Uh, through language, we can also realize that the present artistic creativity cannot be separated from the cultural heritage and artistic tradition from the past. That's why I would uh, just like to remind you uh, about one of the major theses of uh, Blaze Koneski, one of the major uh, Macedonian poets, uh, scholar, and uh, one of the most important uh, cultural workers in the, in, in the 20th century Macedonian history, who, who pointed out that uh, each poet or each artist or each uh, writer is connected uh, with the tradition, with the, with the, with the cultural uh, heritage. Uh, he, he, he was saying that while he was uh, uh, writing a poem, he was uh, always uh, 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 he was always linked with the legends, with the myth, with the, with with this, this uh, folk and oral uh, tradition inherited from the from the from the past. Uh, on the other hand, uh, every poet, every uh, every writer is using uh, language, uh, the language which was uh, created from the previous. Uh, generations. Uh, his or her poems uh, will communicate with the future generations of readers uh, if they, of course, if they understand the, the same language, but the other option, which is very uh, important for the cultural memory, is also the, 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 trans the, the translations of literary works. Uh, therefore, the international and cultural uh, dialogue exchange and cooperation are crucial uh, for both a mutual understanding as well as understanding the concept of cultural uh, heritage. Uh, although there is a tendency to talk about national cultural uh, uh, heritage, which is uh, quite legitimate uh, in the context of uh, the contemporary society, uh, but also in the context of, of my discipline, the comparative literature, uh, 
um, uh, it is important to point out that uh, there is no culture which exists in isolation from others. The, the, the concept itself of, of, of culture is uh, linked with the concept of uh, palimpsest. All great achievements in culture belong to all mankind. As a phenomenon, culture is a palimpsest and uh, the whole uh, of culture is essentially shared. Um, understanding many uh, phenomena in art, in culture, literature, uh, at the national level uh, necessarily leads our to, to the international uh, uh, dialogues, exchanges, as well as facing the fact uh, that there are uh, regional and, and cross-cultural achievements, as well as larger co uh, cultural uh, zones. Um, on the other hand, uh, the power of heritage is also deeply connected with the concept of uh, diversity. That's why I really like this uh, slogan, United in Diversity. Um, I have participated so far in many international literary uh, festivals, uh, especially poetry festivals, where uh, literary works are presented uh, by the authors uh, to be read in the mother tongue, of course, and then uh, read in translation so that the local audience can understand th those poems. Uh, it is wonderful to hear uh, the diversity of languages, uh, the different uh, legacy, linguistic and cultural uh, legacy, and also the music of each uh, language. Uh, that's why uh, I would like uh, I would like to give the the latest uh, uh, example, which is uh, uh, related to the to the Macedonian language, the language that I use in, uh, in my writing. Uh, um, as an example of shared heritage, I would like to point uh, uh, out the old Slavic uh, language, old Slavic uh, literacy and literature, important for all uh, Slavic uh, um, uh, states and nations all over Europe as a common root of all Slavic languages, including, of course, uh, the Macedonian. Uh, that's why I think that the challenging the authenticity of the uh, Macedonian language these days, uh, I will just remind you, it's the 21st century, due to the daily political agendas, which are witnessing these days, is extremely uh, problematic in, 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 from my viewpoint, as uh, it could translate as a challenge or dispute of the Macedonian literature, art, and culture. And uh, uh, from this perspective, I, I think that uh, each uh, poet each writer is uh, connected uh, and uh, cannot create some, uh, out, out of the context uh, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the language, of the native language. Although we all know that uh, there are many writers uh, who were creating in different uh, languages. Uh, poet, uh, poets create in a language they inherited from their ancestors. Uh, but every uh, poem in the original and when translated is not only the fruit of a linguistic tradition, but it also belongs, uh, belongs to the world uh, literature. Uh, uh, great art uh, crosses all boundaries, and that is why uh, the cultural heritage belongs to all uh, humans. Some of the most beautiful achievements in all segments of art and culture are created precisely because of the mixing of cultures. Uh, and I would, I would like to, to uh, also to stress that um, if we understand uh, the, the power uh, of heritage and culture, we shouldn't talk uh, that there, there we, we should also have in mind that uh, they are also fragile. Like uh, the humankind, the products of human culture and art, uh, as we all know, and, and as we all have witnessed uh, can be destroyed. Uh, in these pandemic circumstances, for instance, we have all uh, become uh, convinced of the fragility and insecurity of today's humanity. Uh, due to the consumerism and greed for profit, we have become a, a threat uh, to other forms of existence as well as to our own uh, cultural heritage. We have seen that uh, war conflicts all over the world in the last decade in different uh, 
uh, have seriously damaged significant, significant cultural uh, treasures. That, uh, that's why I think that one of the most important uh, measures, uh, long-term measures, how can we uh, um, how can we care uh, really about the about the um, uh, cultural heritage uh, is uh, to, to cultivate uh, the the culture of tolerance and peace. Um, we learn to appreciate some things only when we realize uh, then we can easily lose them. Uh, the economic uh, crisis that is inseparable from the pandemic crisis can also affect uh, the neglect of care for cultural heritage. However, in uh, this different uh, difficult period, we also have a chance to see how art and culture are important for all of us. Uh, just as Boccaccio's De Cameron was created during uh, a, a plague epidemic in the Renaissance period, these difficult months uh, on our planets are sure to create works of art that will grow into a significant cultural heritage site. That is, uh, that is my hope. And thank you for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for your attention. Thank you, Vladimir, for your fruitful approach. Um, it was very interesting. So uh, I will now invite our Greek friend, Sofia Grigoriadou. Uh, she lives and works between Athens and Skopje. She is a PhD candidate in social anthropology uh, on the Pantheon University at Athens researching how contemporary art participates, intervenes in, and comments on changes that take place in the past decade in these two cities, Skopje and Athens. She holds an EMF, uh, e MFA degree from the Athens School of Fine Arts. She is also a graduate of the painting department of the ASFA 2013 and the Philosophical, Pedagogical and Psychological Department of the University of Athens in 2006. She has participated in exhibitions, conferences, research and artistic projects in Athens, Edinburgh, Istanbul, Skopje and Beirut. She has curated, co-curated and co-organized artistic projects and exhibitions. She has co-organized and uh, carried out artistic and educational workshops, and she has worked as an assistant professor at the um, uh, workshop, painting workshop at ASFA. She collaborates with artists and anthropologists in the framework of Twix Lab, a workshop situated in between contemporary art, anthropology, and the everyday in Athens. And she is a member of ACO, ACO uh, Sophia, please uh, make it is ACO, <laughs> ACO, a multidisciplinary group that focuses on sound, movement, and public space. Through her art practice, she aims at questioning and destabilizing sedimented forms of truth, as well as exploring and proposing methods of reflection, research, and knowledge production. Her works refer to cultural critique and anthropology and often use the strategies of subversive affirmation and appropriation, as well as a wide variety of media ranging from cartography to installation, artist intervention, lecture performance, photography, walking, sound, and text. So, um, Sofia lives for a longer period of time in Skopje, making uh, uh, the research uh, for her PhD. And uh, she has a very interesting research, uh, which uh, on the end uh, changes the approach with which she arrived actually primarily in Skopje, or the way she understood and felt and uh, knew the things before coming here and uh, Sofia what is now your approach to these relations between Greece and Macedonia or Athens and Skopje or other sort of um, researches. Thank you Anna very much for the introduction thank you for the invitation and uh, I'm very glad that I'm given the chance to talk about these things uh, these topics uh, that me worried and keep me thinking all this time. 
Uh, I would like also to thank Vladimir for putting several things that I wanted to discuss, especially the idea of uh, referring to heritage and building uh, on it by artists and by cultural practitioners uh, and adding, and this idea of adding new layers to the palimpsest uh, of uh, heritage and culture. So yeah, I will discuss some topics related to heritage and uh, mainly to culture and art. Uh, speaking from my point of view as an artist from Athens and second as someone from Athens coming to Skopje as an anthropologist and as an artist. Uh, so social anthropologist Sharon MacDonald uses the term difficult heritage in order to refer to heritage that is not uh, celebrated, but on the contrary is unsettling or is troubling. Like, for example, the, the Nazi atrocities. Uh, bringing this idea to the Greek context, anthropologist Eleana Yaluri and Elpida Riku examine Greek heritage also as a potentially difficult one, despite all its glory and all the, uh, all the things that it's been linked to. Uh, they enumerate a number of reasons for this, such as the crypto colonialist case uh, of the West Hungary, also because of the presence of this heritage. Uh, or the often tyrannical as the only presence of antiquities in urban space, which made the building of new buildings, uh, preparation of uh, new buildings, or the construction of public works. Uh, in general, they refer to the domination of the past over the present in Greece uh, that can be paralyzing. As an artist educated and having worked in Greece, I can say that a very tyrannical issue regarding ancient heritage is that the cultural the current cultural policies in Greece have always focused mainly on the preservation and promotion of ancient uh, Greek heritage, which has been a source of cultural and economic capital, uh, but also uh, offer a timeless ideological basis for Greek creative claims. So uh, it has been uh, this, this kind of practices have been favored. Uh, uh, and supported, but contemporary art, on on the other hand. Uh, has not been supported equally with this. They have been, has been overshadowed. Uh, not in terms of autonomy, not in terms of education, of infrastructure. Uh, Vladimir talked about the importance of art and uh, cultural education uh, for dealing with heritage. So even in order to enter the School of Fine Art, one needs to be able to realistically draw an ancient, <coughs> I'm sorry, to realistically draw ancient Greek or Roman forces in a time when art has developed so much further away from these kinds of uh, representations. Uh, I can say that lately there is uh, some big interest for contemporary art in the city, uh, but it's mostly from uh, private institutions, which is a still a new thing uh, in Greece, perhaps, I don't know, less than 10 years. And, um, uh, but the, in the public sector, there is not so much interest. Of course, there are changes in the School of Fine Art, there are newer, uh, younger professors teaching, uh, promoting uh, different uh, ideas about art, uh, and in the end, there is a flourishing contemporary art scene in, in Athens right now. But still, heritage and antiquity overshadow contemporary production. There are examples of uh, contemporary artists, both Greek and foreigners, who allow this ancient heritage to act upon them to such an extent that the work uh, becomes mere admiration of, it, of the heritage, or a reproduction of it, or a confirmation of it. Um, uh, however, since the Olympic Games of 2004, uh, there, there, are, there is a big rapture, there are changes, there is a rapture with the dominant na national narrative of uh, Greece as a country of progress, of prosper, of modernization, uh, uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, there is a, a rapture of this uh, national narrative of the ancient heritage as a timeless thread that has endured in time, that is clean uh, and uh, uninfluenced from anything that happened in Greece after the golden years of Pericles. Uh, so there is an, a new awareness of the limits of, uh, of the national sovereignty, uh, probably uh, some ideas uh, that artists are talking about the unequal position of Greece in relation to perhaps other European countries and uh, specifically the impossibility of a pure national identity uh, uh, that is it's now expressed through contemporary art, through cinema, through music, through other fields. Uh, so the big amounts of money spent during the Olympic Games and also this uh, glorification of Greekness that took place uh, during their, their exhibition, during the Games, 
has uh, has led to this criticism, but also uh, this criticism were um, even more intensified after the 2008 crisis and uh, later on the so-called Greek crisis, uh, with uh, social struggles and uh, also with a large part of the local art scene proposing critical approaches to heritage, subversive affirmations of or queerings of the idealization of antiquity, uh, of the Greek constitutional myth, of Greek nationalism, even of Hellenism. Um, in general, artists became increasingly critical towards this idea of Greekness. Uh, and, and many times it was uh, very much linked to issues with gender, uh, gender equality, gender visibility in public space, and all this. Uh, contemporary artists and cultural workers, uh, they are, as you, you have also mentioned, and I think this is a very good idea, are producing new heritage for the future. And, uh, or they, they even produce new views of ex on existing heritage. So now what I'm particularly interested in, uh, both as a researcher, but also as an artist, among other things, uh, is not too much uh, shared heritage per se, but uh, shared or common on a reality parallel uh, artistic practices that deal with heritage, both in Athens and in Skopje. Uh, and uh, because the two art scenes are not really familiar with each other, I would say that it's more parallel than common, but maybe, maybe one day they will be shared also if uh, there are more exchanges between the two countries. Um, so I would say that there are two ways that I find beautiful in which art practices deal with heritage. These are the proposed uh, or the, the proposal or the demand to establish new heritage, the demand for a new distribution of the sensible, I would say. Uh, focused, uh, these practices are focused on building something, building community, building archives, uh, work with uh, uh, work on official level for the establishment of new heritage and this kind of practices. And uh, the second category would be practices focused on the destabilization or the undermining of big truths that are proposed by featuring narratives regarding what is heritage uh, in a way that artists provoke um, uh, discomfort, they provoke uneasiness, they provoke, but, but this discomfort and uneasiness uh, in the end leads to le reflection. Uh, so they don't uh, have this straightforward, uh, the moralistic or didactic uh, attitude that many times activist work, for example, might have uh, related to this same, same topic. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't want to make a slide with examples of artists, but uh, we could uh, speak later on uh, in the discussion for uh, maybe, or I don't know, I think that the, among the attendees, there are people like OPA, for example, who have been working on this direction, so maybe they could share their opinions as well. Uh, in general, I think that no matter how imagined and no matter how modern, if we accept that we live in these postmodern times with this question today, how much uh, imagined and modern this idea of nations is, uh, it still creates real feelings and provokes real actions and reactions. And I think we're, we're not over a nationalism. Uh, on the contrary, nationalism is on the rise right now. Uh, perhaps maybe because uh, of uh, our means of communication, the social media are in a way functioning by uh, those provo the, prov the provocation of more polarization. Although maybe this is not deliberate, but this is somehow an outcome of, of how they work. And I think it's getting trickier and trickier to deal with uh, the idea of nations, nationalism, and national feelings. Um, maybe it would be uh, elitist or paternalist to say, let's abolish everything linked to, to nationalism. Uh, the rituals are, I don't know, ridiculous, the ideas are obsolete. Uh, I think um, uh, uh, when, when something is served as uh, global or universal, or most probably, uh, most probably represent the Western point of view. So I'm a bit afraid to use and to accept words as, not to accept, but to use the words as universal, humanism, global, etc. But I think we should think a little bit of how, how to communicate these messages in a different way or how to think of, of these ideas in a different way. Uh, because they can backfire and bring more radical opinions. Uh, so thinking about art in times of uh, increasing idealizations, increasing generalizations of the past, essential, essentializations, in times of rising nationalism, 
uh, in times of online art alt-right uh, trolling leads to further polarization. And this idea of are you with us or are you against us that is more and more repeating. Um, we need to accept that there are dystopias, there are uncertainties, and uh, I think we should not respond with more certainties, moralisms, and and yes, uh, affirmations. I think we need an ambiguity that art can uh, offer. We need estrangement, uh, and we need to contribute to the debate uh, to continue to question, continue to seek uh, participate in the public sphere and the public dialogues in an agonistic way and not an, antag an antagonistic way, as the Talmud would put it. Uh, or uh, as David Berliner, who is an anthropologist, puts it, uh, we should seek to destabilize categories of culture, identities, and roots by demonstrating, demonstrating how unstable they are um, and uh, how mobilized the historical and cultural regime power they can, they can be. Uh, when it comes to heritage, art could assist in pointing out our stereotypical relationship with antiquity and to criticizing what is taken for granted. Uh, so I think in general, uh, critical art, but also anthropology can can offer this kind of possibilities, these points of view uh, that can foster this kind of uh, stance. Uh, in terms of the idea of uh, international uh, co collaborations that you have uh, we uh, have seen in, uh, among the questions that you have been doing to other people. I think uh, I am very fond of this uh, this kind of ex uh, exchange, um, and not only collaborations, but other kinds of exchange, like meetings, traveling, art exhibitions. Uh, I think uh, this is a very important uh, way of getting to know each other and uh, understanding what's what's happening on the other side. Uh, because you get to know the people, you talk to them, you don't long, no longer see them through the prism of this generalized idea that is constructed about who they are. Uh, so uh, I think there are, uh, there are possibilities for better understanding. Perhaps there are other kinds of conf conflicts that appear when you collaborate with people, but definitely uh, there, is, there are big possibilities for breaking a lot of stereotypes. Uh, so I'm glad that this kind of collaborations have started in uh, in uh, the field of art, as far as I know. I don't know about other fields. Uh, so Art Speaks Lab, uh, which is this laboratory between art and anthropology that we have in Athens, uh, we have invited OPA in the past, and uh, and this year we have also posted a video by Nebosha Village. And these are small, some small steps in getting to know each other. As I remember the presentation of OPA, uh, uh, also, it was done live. There were like there were among the people, and there was, there was a lot of questions from the audience and uh, about the country, about the situation. So I think uh, it was very very useful in these terms. Um, I have participated in in projects and exhibitions here. So here I will not uh, uh, say which now and take the time. Uh, and I had had no problems at all. On the contrary, I'm very happy and very satisfied with these collaborations. I also had very good time and I met people with whom today I have become friends. Any problems or thoughts coming out of these collaborations or of my activity here in general are mostly uh, linked to my own thoughts and to my own position as a researcher and an artist from Athens who came to Skopje in order to do research here. Uh, so it's it's mostly um, in my own reflections and thoughts. So the main issue I had to deal with was the question of who I am to come here and speak about Skopje through art. From uh, from which position do I speak? Uh, is it pro perhaps a position of power com coming from Greece during a period that the country has to change its name in order for Greece to allow it to enter into the European Union? Uh, so, uh, and this uh, position in a way took me by surprise because uh, the Proposal for doing this PhD came much before the Best Plus Agreement. Uh, a good chance to think of this difficult position, I think, was the Galicznik residency. residency and thank you very much <laughs> for the invitation. Uh, and uh, I decided to, what I decided to do with this residency was to exhibit a diary that, with all these thoughts. I spent a lot of time thinking about. Uh, uh, how Skopje for me was an interesting city with interesting things going on, 
um, and how uncomfortable this feeling of interest made me feel. And I thought of uh, how people from uh, uh, how people were visiting Greece, uh, Athens, a few years ago during the crisis, and I was very curious, like why why do you visit Athens now? And the most common reply was uh, that the city is interesting. It was the same as uh, because of the crisis or because of the crisis has generated in Greece. And uh, I felt somehow that I was being treated as part of a, spe a spectacle, as part of uh, crisis tourism. And um, uh, I felt that when Athens is drained and it's not interesting anymore, that people will fly to new uh, places that would be called New Berlin, as Athens was called New Berlin. So at the moment that I visited Skopje, I found the city and its people interesting. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, I'm here, I'm acting like uh, the tourists and the experts that I have met uh, in Athens. And this is problematic. Uh, a few years later, I really moved to Skopje. And I met uh, more people who had the same point of view that Skopje is an interesting place. It's a place where it's uh, people love art so much that it's okay for them to do it for free, a place full of possibilities to intervene in the local art scene and to form it. Some people, like some articles, and some people will call it it's a new Disneyland, it's a new Las Vegas. This is interesting. There, there was a discussion. Um, locals would always repeat, it's not interesting, it's painful. Uh, the, the changes in the city sometimes are aggressive. Um, so, but inevitably, it's also food for thought. So, I'm here now, I'm living in, in these interesting cities, and I'm having to deal uh, with a lot of uh, thin lines. Uh, but uh, but I think uh, spending time in Skopje and having friendship collaboration here have made me more reflexive, a lot more ref reflexive in this sense. Uh, so thinking about Skopje has made me thought about Athens from Christ in a different way and vice versa. And I think that this is very uh, it's very impossible, very, very uh, important in um, in the way I deal with uh, with my PhD and with my thoughts and everything. So. That's for now. I will leave uh, the rest for discussion because I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sophie, for your contribution and for your interesting uh, approach. It opened another point of view and approach to the topic of the importance of the culture and especially contemporary art. Uh, now, I will invite the last uh, panelist for today's uh, um, webinar. That's uh, Christian Kovacev. He's a historian and guest lecturer at the Southwestern University, Neofitrilski, from Blagoevgrad, Bulgaria. He conducts lectures in anthropology of the Middle Ages, cultural anthropology, and theory of culture. He participates in the organization and logistics of the conference culture, heritage and tourism for small towns and was a part of the team working on the project field archaeological excavation along the route of the Struma motorway by the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. He has master's degree in Bulgarian Middle Ages, uh, state society culture from the Sofia University St. Clement Ohritsky as a historian whose PhD is related with medieval Ohrid, he is more than a relevant co-speaker on the topics of the shared and contested heritage or the power of the heritage and culture. So Christian, please take the floor. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, well, the topic is very big. At the same time, it's very actual. Probably everyone is following the news about what is happening between Bulgaria and Macedonia. Uh, the problem of the heritage is uh, multifaceted and must be address addressed uh, interdisciplinary. I will allow myself to start with uh, Latin phrase, Cine Irate Studio, without anger and patience. These words are often used to remind historians not to get carried away by emotions. Uh, when writing about the past. The scientific approach does not require you to admire the glorious battles, but to be critical of the sources. In my opinion, the time for narration of national stories by historians has passed. Of course, there are still historians 
who write about the great Bulgarian national history uh, in the Middle Age, which we, uh, which we should be proud of. But at the same time, there is a group of researchers trying to find other ways to present the common past and heritage. Uh, for example, in Bulgarian context, uh, Stefan Dechev, Chadar Marinov, Rumen Duskovov, Dimitar Atanasov, and so on. They attempt to present the common heritage in the acceptable way, in line with the new trends uh, in historical science, is often opposed by nationalists. They are written and talked about as making an alternative history. But I think that's the right approach. We have a problem, the past and the heritage. This problem could be solved scientifically beyond the emotional by presenting these alternative stories, I'll say the official national narrative, that complement definitions such as shared history, common heritage, and so on. Not only Bulgarian, Macedonian, Greek, uh, Serbian heritage, but common and shared. Uh, conceiving this heritage as common and shared uh, will be a long process, especially in societies that think in strictly national frameworks. Uh, let's take a brief look at the history of Ohrid. Uh, this is my uh, dissertation topic, uh, as Anna mentioned. Uh, in antiquity, the Illyrians lived in Ohrid. And at the same time, there was the presence of ancient Greeks. Later, it entire the borders of the Roman Empire. After the 10th century, it was within the borders of the Bulgarian state. After the 1018, Ohrid fell within the borders of the Byzantine Empire. Later followed a period in which uh, it was sometimes within the borders of Bulgaria, sometimes within the borders of Byzantium, or in the countries of some of the uh, upper states. In the 14th century, Ohrid was part of Serbia. At one point, the Rower uh, was even the member of Albanian Gropa family. After the 15th century, Ohrid was already within the borders of the Ottoman Empire. In the first uh, decades of the 20th century, it was ruled by Bulgarians, Serbs, it then entered Yugoslavia. Apart from that, after the 8th century, the papacy made claims to the lands in which Ohrid is located. Uh, even in 13th century, the Pope sent uh, Catholic bishops are there, but if you ask some Bulgarian in our days, he will answer, Ohrid's heritage is our Bulgarian, this is capital of Bulgarian King Samuel, and if you ask some Macedonian, he will answer, maybe Ohrid is our, it's is castle of Macedonism, some would probably uh, consider Ohrid as part of the Greater Albania project. And now, what is the solution of the pro to the problem? Apparently, the writing of military and political history within nationalism is problematic. Uh, what is the exit? According to me, the shift of focus from the great national stories to the daily life of ordinary people, how they live, how they taught the world around them. Many researchers are now focusing not so much on the studies of politics and wars, glorious victories and great kings, as on culture placing the research focus on microhistory, uh, it is true that the historical sources for the ordinary life are few, but this is exactly uh, the academic challenge. It has been made in European science since the 20th century. Firstly, we have the annual schools in France, Giovanni Levi and his school in microhistory in Italy, Aaron Gurevich in Russia, Milan Ristovic in Serbia. Uh, let's go to back. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's go back to Ohrid. Uh, we saw the, that Ohrid is a disputed territory. At the same time, however, we can talk about Ohrid in a different way. The cultural heritage of Ohrid, which is a sacred place for Bulgarians, Macedonians, Albanians, Greeks, Serbs, would benefit from the new reading as a common Balkan and common European heritage without distorting historical facts and without opposing the interests of the countries in their current borders. This would be possible by presenting the alternative story, the one that, we, uh, that will not divide, uh, divide us. For example, the history of art and culture. 
Uh, here we can give a perfect example with the Macedonian art historian Tsutan Krustanov. Well, however, this could happen after considering modern Western conceptions of nations as imagined communities, according to Benedict Anderson, and as a product of 18th and 19th centuries. Excluding uh, nationalist discourse, medieval Ohrid can be seen as a place of contact between East and West, which is also seen in it, its image uh, system, frescoes, icons, and so on. Uh, yes, it seems difficult to fight the iron curtain of nationalism, but this is an academic challenge, I repeat. Uh, in a supranational context, cultural heritage can unite the communities. In this regard, the attempt to develop cultural rules of the Council of Europe is indicative. They act as channels for intercultural dialogue and promote a better knowledge and understand an European shared cultural heritage. Uh, a good opportunity is the development of global networks for shared cultural heritage, which will uh, strengthen universal values. I think the foundation has already been laid. Let's take the example of uh, Bulgarian Macedonia, Macedonia again. We see a co cooperation between the Department of Ethnology at Sofia University and to the one at Skopje University. Joint scientific conference are held. The cooperation between Southwest University in Ofitriuski Bogograd, the University of Skopje, and the Institute of National History in Skopje is also indicated. Uh, here is the attempt to construct a multidisciplinary commission to solve the problems of the common uh, heritage. However, there is a difficult road ahead to uncovering the common and shared heritage. In my opinion, this will be the case as long as the political course dictates how we talk about the past. Uh, this will be the case until uh, the past was used by politicians to argue their current policies. Uh, solving the problems must become an aim of historical guilt and its task is not easy to talk about the past uh, as it is without additional embellishments in, uh, influenced by current politics and nationalism. Uh, I will finish the way I started uh, with Cine Iraite Studio. Uh, this is my uh, personal opinion and uh, I thank you for uh, attention. Thank you very much, Christian, for uh, your contribution, for your very interesting approach, uh, um, taking into account that it is an approach uh, from the position of a historian. It is uh, interesting that we had um, um, four different approaches from four different, let's say, um, uh, directions of uh, dealing with uh, history, heritage, arts, culture, and so on. Uh, one from a uh, historian, one from um, a poet or a professor from uh, uh, liter literature uh, and contemporary artist, as well as Antonella's point of view as a um, European administrator working in um, topics related with shared or contested heritage in Europe. Uh, so I would now um, ask uh, the uh, panelists if you want to, to ask the other panelists some questions uh, or as well I will ask the, uh, all the other um, attendees or uh, the people, the audience to um, ask questions and um, to uh, become a part of this open um, online panel discussion. Uh, we have uh, one question from Anna Krstinovska. Uh, she says, thank you for your great insights. What specific actions, policy measures can be implemented to contribute to a positive shift in political culture, which will promote shared instead of uh, divisive culture and we lay the foundations for bridging the gaps, 
as opposed to deepening them. So I will invite any of the panelists willing to address uh, uh, answer to this question. Maybe I'll, or maybe I'll. Uh, I think uh, that the society, the politicians, should give the work to the scientists, to the academic people, not the politicians uh, who make politics, uh, not science. This is my opinion. Uh, Uh, I would I would agree with this with this point that um, uh, the, the the cultural um, the cultural heritage uh, can be uh, can be um, used as a as a bond as a as a bridge as a, uh, as a way how we can uh, better understand each other and in in that sense uh, of course. Uh, the, the main role will be in the in the in the in the hands of cultural workers, of artists, also of scientists, specialists in this in this particular area. Uh, can I add something? Uh, I don't know if I'm heard. Yes. Yes. Ah, good, good. So I think uh, from, from an artist's point of view, I think that uh, art is a very good tool in this, uh, uh, in, in, the, in dealing with heritage uh, because it can, it can really shake us, I think. It can really uh, make us think completely differently. Uh, it, can move, uh, it can move our ideas. So there are many examples of, of, of art, of artworks that has, have really changed uh, a little bit or a lot the way you see the world and especially the way you see your own, uh, accept, the, the things that you have accepted as truth, your own truths, your own certainties. So I think that this is a very, very useful uh, uh, way, uh, direction on which to think. I would also like to add something. Yes, uh, uh, that that's why uh, I mean uh, this uh, communication through art is really important uh, 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 to have uh, common. Com let's say uh, I, I would give, I would like to give uh, a few examples uh, in, in the in the um, field of literature as well. Uh, for instance, the the international award. Called Balkanica. Uh, thanks to this award, uh, focused on contemporary uh, writers from all over the region, uh, we have opportunity to get to know each other better, to have new translations of the works of really brilliant authors from the uh, regions, and to have uh, readership. Uh, you know this. Uh, I really uh, particularly like uh, this uh, point uh, in Christian's uh, um, and uh, Sophie's um, uh, contribution, uh, talking about um, collaboration and cross-cultural um, uh, and cross-cultural um, uh, projects, including this project as well. Uh, when when people get to know each other uh, through art, through a, a different artistic practices, not only literature, of course. Uh, Visual arts, theater, uh, cinema, and uh, when 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 uh, they, they realize that uh, the the neighboring cultures are, uh, of course, they, they accept the, the difference, but they they they, have, they are facing many similar uh, problem problems, many similar um, many similar situations of the contemporary life, and that's why I think that uh, communication through art can help us. To, to bridge these uh, gaps uh, imposed by uh, the daily politics. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, 
I was ask I will ask you one question. I mean, I can ask myself as well because I'm a cultural worker. Um, but I will ask you as a panelist, um, being a part of this uh, open discussion, uh, what do you think, how, um, how loud are we uh, in terms of trying to uh, become a very hearable sound, hearable sound into the ears of the politicians to, um, to change the way and approach to, to this very disputive um, questions of uh, dealing with share or contested heritage. Do we need to be a little bit more um, loud and how? Because we do a lot of projects we are a part of a lot of cross-border uh, collaborations, but uh, I don't think uh, if we are enough uh, visible. Um, it's a very interesting uh, question. Um, today, uh, I, I have the, the chance to read all, um, all interviews of all our um, colleagues, and I was very, very happy uh, but I was not surprised uh, to know that uh, people from different uh, art fields and uh, uh, also uh, from the academic world, scholars, they have brilliant uh, collaborations in, in the re regional co collaboration. Uh, but um, I, I have a feeling uh, that most of the people are not aware of this, uh, that... that uh, uh, because uh, there is no media attention, as, as you just said, that, that uh, for instance, uh, artists, they, they do many projects together, or uh, there are many uh, translated works, or there are uh, many new uh, scientific projects. Uh, I, I can also take the example of the collaboration between uh, Macedonia and Bulgaria, uh, because I have witness, witnessed... Uh, uh, many, many nice meetings between writers uh, in, in Skopje, in Sofia. Last year, uh, because I'm the vice president of the Macedonian uh, Pen Center, we have an extraordinary meeting with our colleagues from Bulgaria with many projects, with many ideas, uh, but there was, um, there was uh, really nothing in the media about this event because it is not a conflict. Because uh, I have this feeling that um, that medias are more interested about uh, disputes, conflicts, and uh, and uh, this um, let's say dramatic uh, political fight. And unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, so so that's why I would agree that we should be uh, much louder than this. Probably we shall. Um be more reactive to the media and ask for a bigger space in the media because that's that's the what people do they they read uh, newspapers or they read blogs or electronic uh, social device um, devices so i think that we shall be more into uh, promotion and um, sharing the knowledge about this uh, cross-border cooperation in, in each field, even in the field of uh, history, as Christian already mentioned. There are a lot of uh, projects in, in that uh, field as well, which are very prolific and very successful. Can I, can I uh, add? Yes. I think that uh, I very much agree with you uh, uh, with this uh, idea of visibility. I think that we are really lacking visibility and we need it. And I think that uh, also a strategy that at least has been very uh, helpful for me is this uh, position of being uh, having an in-between position with the institution and also outside of the institution. Uh, so to, 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 to try to keep, like with the institution, you have the visibility outside of the, of the institution, you, you can say more things and you can be more, let's say, uh, honest or more not honest, but sincere. So I think combining these two positions that we can have as cultural workers in and outside uh, is something that can give us uh, the possibility of saying more things and saying them more loudly. I agree. OK, 
Okay, we have another question from uh, uh, Jelena Petrovska. She says the topic is very interesting and current, especially at a time when unfortunately we are all alienated from the pandemic. My question is related to the role of libraries in the promotion of cultural heritage, tolerance, education of all generations to promote cooperation in the cultural field. Do you think that libraries might be a key factor in promoting tolerance, bringing neighbors closer together in the cultural field and greater cooperation in the field of language and culture promotion? So Vladimir, probably you would be the first <laughs> call yes. to answer this question. Thank you, Yelena, for this wonderful uh, question, because libraries are really uh, very, very important. They are, they are a sort of a museum of the cultural heritage in the field of, of uh, liter literature and the field of uh, language heritage as well. Uh, so uh, in, in, in the national libraries, for instance, you can you can, or in the big libraries all over the world, you can you can find uh, books written in, in in very different languages. You can learn about many interesting things. You can encounter the thought uh, the thoughts of, of uh, brilliant uh, people from the past, and and uh, that's why uh, libraries. Uh, but I, unfortunately, I think uh, during this pandemic um, uh, period. Uh, they're not uh, the place which is uh, which uh, you can find many people there. E even in the case of Macedonia, was uh, was a bit uh, frightening for me because uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the libraries were closed uh, uh, nearly till uh, in, uh, I think June or July. Even uh, and uh, I, I I think that. Uh, the libraries uh, should be the place, not only libraries, but also cultural centers, a uh, place where you can uh, learn about uh, the media texts uh, or, or the, um, the cultural centers, uh, the places where you can meet uh, different uh, um, different uh, artistic uh, practices. Uh, you can watch uh, films, or you can. Or you can uh, or you can be uh, part of some cultural events. Of course, all those places uh, uh, can be can be the let's say the the the, the culture in the cultural field. They can they can really encourage this uh, cooperation. Uh, if I would also like to add something here, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, it's very important. Like I think libraries are really, really important in general. Knowledge, education are very, very important uh, parts of, of uh, dealing with these things. And uh, in times of Corona, that we are all <laughs> close inside our houses, then the internet is a is a platform from where we get our education and our knowledge. And in these terms, I would like to mention also archives, for example. That Opa is doing in uh, contemporary art taking place in the country, and uh, it's among also as artistic practices that deal with heritage. And, and they, I mean, libraries, archives, uh, uh, all these uh, sources are open open up a lot of uh, information that uh, somehow uh, also you can uh, not only get informed but also, as Vladimir said. Uh, yeah, to, to change. Uh... Yeah, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought, but <laughs> I hope you got what I said. I will be brief. Uh, the question is very complicated. Yes, I think libraries have a big role to play in the, uh, on the issue of shared heritage. I will answer with the question the, uh, because the problem is. Uh, at least for the Bulgarian societies, I uh, told, uh, how to make people go to read in the libraries to be critical, not to trust only what is said in the media. Yeah, 
as unfortunately very rarely people do uh, read uh, books, go in the libraries, visit museums or exhibitions. They say sometimes that it is related with our uh, standard and our economical situation. Maybe it is, maybe as well, or not maybe, but for sure it is related with the educational level and with uh, their belief that they will find more information into these um, uh, churches or crumbs or temples of the knowledge uh, than on the social media or uh, looking at the TV screen being hypnotized by already packed and just uh, given uh, information. So, um, Yelena Petrovska said, uh, thank you. As librarians, we really struggle every day to stay open to our members and to work in a changing environment. Thank mm. you all panelists for the opinion. Okay, do we have some other questions? Maybe some of the panelists would like to ask some, some uh, other panelists or to add some other thoughts. I would like to ask Christian, uh, I don't know uh, how close is his experience with, uh, with Ohrid and UNESCO, so maybe if the question is relevant, uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, some opinion about this paradox of UNESCO, of uh, uh, guarding of a place, uh, say, uh, keeping the heritage of the place at the same time, exposing to transformation, forming new, new identities, but also uh, it could also lead to more nationalism uh, or more sources of uh, collective danger. I don't know if uh, if he has any experience of this. I'm, I'm curious, uh, not because I know something, but because I don't know anything. <laughs> Christian? No, you can't hear us. I don't know why. Do you hear me? You are muted. Please uh, unmute your uh, mic. Uh, now Sorry, I okay. can't. Uh, now it's okay. Anything? Do you uh, hear now me now? Sophia, I think that you were supposed to uh, give yeah, it another try. I don't question. know. Yeah. Uh, Christian, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will refrain. I will say the question again. So I would like, uh, not because I know something, but because I don't know anything <laughs> on this. Uh, some uh, uh, some thoughts or some ideas about the paradox of uh, of UNESCO or the the idea of uh, international heritage uh, mission. Uh, from one hand, uh, it guards, it uh, it maintains, it saves, let's say, the heritage of a place. And on the other hand, it exposes to transformation of place. Uh, it forms new identities, it brings tourists, it brings a lot of movement, but it also can lead to more nationalism sometimes. Uh, the fear of uh, there's something like a collective danger. I don't know if you have some comments on this specifically. I know from Ohrid if you have, uh, if, if, if something that think this is taking place, I have no clue, or from other, from other places if you know. Well, the problem is very big. Uh, Ohrid uh, has a lot of problems with its international cultural heritage. They have projects for transformation of the cultural environment. Uh, but uh, according to some researchers, there is uh, danger to the local heritage and uh, uh, according to them, we, uh, we can't talk about uh, the common European heritage uh, because of 
these problems. Uh, UNESCO uh, has several reports from the uh, transformation of cultural environment in Ohrid, but uh, now there, uh, there are very big discussion about uh, the future of uh, uh, the Ohrid's heritage as the uh, common and shared uh, European heritage. Uh, I repeat, UNESCO have several reports in this uh, relation. Thank you. Okay, we, we have uh, probably one of the last questions uh, from Viktor Zakar. Uh, he says, thanks. Do formerly politically motivated subventioned arts, arts deserve to be considered as a cultural heritage and consequently be protected? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the beginning of the question. Does? So he says, uh, do formally politically motivated subventioned arts deserve to be considered as a cultural heritage and consequently be protected? I think that this is a very big question. It's very hard to answer it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's very general. I think that its context is different, and uh, it's it's its context yes uh, dictates different things. Uh, I could say what happens, but not what should happen. And I think that what is considered heritage changes, maybe not uh, drastically, but uh, over the years can change slowly. But some things are protected. Uh, that are created from governments or supported by governments, and uh, in the next government they're not protected anymore. They don't. They're not considered heritage anymore, and they're destroyed. They're covered. They're silenced, and everything. So it's, it's difficult to answer the question of what should happen. Yes, I would agree that it's very difficult and tricky question as well, mm -hmm. because uh, what is formally politically motivated. Or, uh, or subvention art. Uh, from one can, uh, from one, uh, from one perspective, uh, can we treat um, Capella Sistini uh, or some uh, must, masterpieces of art which which were uh, uh, motivated by the church, uh, that it's uh, or or let's let's make. Uh, uh, we can go even further uh, to the to the Ainid of of, of uh, Virgil Ainid, uh, linked with the political power of of uh, of uh, Octavian August, uh, or uh, or uh, should we talk about uh, con contemporary cases? Uh, so um, it's it's very difficult to say yes. And, just yes or just no. Just no. Yes, yes. I, it, it depends which work of art. I would say uh, we we have to have in mind the the, the 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 aesthetic values, the values, and we have to have in mind the whole context as well. So, I would ask if there are some other questions. Probably no. So I would uh, conclude this panel discussion and this webinar. I would primarily uh, uh, say thanks to all the panelists. I will say thanks to the organizers of uh, this uh, webinar, uh, to Alda and to Zevde, Forum Zevde. And uh, I would like to uh, believe that uh, such initiatives will uh, follow in the future that we will uh, keep on um, talking about uh, cross-border collaboration, that we will keep on talking about the cultural heritage as a universal value of the humanity, and that we will leave uh, the history and the past to be solved by the professional historians, which will deal with the past without any emotions and without any input from the power of the politicians. Uh, 
uh, not in order to change or switch the, the past and create uh, issues for our everyday uh, politics. So uh, let's create, as uh, Christian uh, said, um, a, a story that will be multi-layered and that will be universal. Let's create a Balkan history and let's create a European history that will belong to each and every one of us. So thanks once again for your collaboration, for uh, your contribution to this panel discussion. And I hope to see you all uh, very soon uh, on another discussion, another project, or uh, on some uh, coffee or uh, tea in Skopje, in Sofia, in Athens, or everywhere and else in the world. Thanks for um, your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Thanks, thank you all for the questions and for your patience. Thank you. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye.